Welcome to Start Here, Go Everywhere. I am Linda Moyo, an alumna of Jobs for America's graduates. On this podcast, we bring you incredible guests from all walks of life, offering the skills to educate, inspire, and challenge you to succeed in both school, on the job skills, and in personal life, leading to productive and rewarding careers. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be speaking with Nicole Porter. I just talked to her a few minutes ago, and already I am learning so much about her, and I am sure that you will leave this podcast just full of information and inspiration. Nicole, welcome. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here with you today, Linda. I really appreciate you inviting me to this amazing podcast. I've been listening, and I'm, I'm loving it. Yes, and part of this is just to learn and introduce various kinds of people. And for this month specifically, May, which is Mental Health Awareness, I want to talk about all things mental health. And right before we started recording, you brought up an important topic of generational education trauma. I don't know if I said that right, but I want to dive into that. Let's start by you sharing with us what your education history was like. What was absolutely. school for Nicole like? You got it, absolutely. First of all, my name is Nicole Porter. I'm with Jobs for Arizona's graduates. I am the Director of Marketing and Communications. And what's so unique about uh, my uh, journey with JAG is it didn't begin six years ago when I came into employment here. It began back in 1993 when I came into the JAG program as a senior in high school. Mm. And when I start my talk about my journey of education, it kind of starts there uh, when I finally understood later the support and help I truly needed to cross the finish line and get that high school diploma. So to back up, I uh, identified very early in second and third grade, I knew I was different than the rest mm. of the students around me. I yeah. knew I felt alienated, I felt alone and unsupported in my education and therefore started to withdraw. I mm. couldn't understand why I couldn't get the concepts that the teacher was laying down, they would talk. Back then, this is the 80s, so this is a while ago. So they got the green chalkboard and they got the chalk up there. You know, you would be quiet, no talking. So it's you know, very uh, a different world than it is today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I would, I remember lots of moments in second, third, fourth grade where the teacher would turn around and say, okay, get going. And every student would put their head to pen to paper, pencil to paper and begin. Yeah. And I remember just sitting there like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And that's a very traumatizing. Mm. And I didn't feel I had a voice. Um, I remember being um, unsupported the, the most Thing I got in trouble for in those years was talking in class oh. and I would have to stay after school or miss my lunch to write I will not talk in class a hundred times <laughs> you know most often those times I was whispering to the students around me what are we doing what am yeah. I doing? <laughs> yeah so I learned quickly don't ask because you get in trouble <laughs> so fast forward I mean that was a very traumatic time for me second third fourth grade I have um um, very distinct visions in my mind where I just was frustrated because um, I couldn't, I didn't know what was happening and I couldn't get the concepts in math and reading like the stu other students were or the language, um, language arts and uh, science class was really hard and I struggled and, you know, I was so little. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, fast forward into sixth, uh, seventh grade, let's go over to middle school. Yeah. My stepdad, who had uh, been my stepdad at that point since sixth grade, noticed something in seventh grade mm -hmm. when he asked me what time it was, and he saw me running all the way to my bedroom to look at my digital clock, but not at the clock on the wall, which was a hand clock, right? Oh, yeah. And he, got, he was like, what are you doing? And to be a seventh grader and to confess you can't read time was very hard for me. You know, back then it was the swatch watches and all the cool things. And, you know, every, the, all the classrooms had the hand clock, you know, and that, that was a struggle for me. So 
the I, I that was the first time an adult, my stepdad at that time, took hours and spent time with me said no you're gonna learn this right now there's no reason for you to continue to be ashamed about this and it's yeah. okay yeah i remember that saturday was hours and hours but i remember by sunday morning i'm like i can tell time <laughs> yeah um but you know that there had already been a lot of educational trauma and it experienced um within uh growing up at that time so by eighth grade, it was I was still struggling in, in quite a few areas and barely graduated from eighth grade with C's and D's. And moving on into my high school year, by freshman, I hadn't connected my education to life, yeah. to adulthood, to because I was like, nope, living in the moment. This is now. And so freshman year, I, that's when I discovered not going to class mm. and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, missing this class or that class. And, you know, and of course, those classes were my, my English and my, my math classes. And those were the biggest areas I struggled in. And that bleeds into a sophomore and junior into my, into my history classes, into my government classes. And it was really only those teachers that could connect with me and, and really said, hey, I'm going to handhold you this semester. We're going to sit down and you're going to do this work and I'm going to be right by your side. Those classes I succeeded in. And the other classes where I didn't get that one-on-one -on -one of focus and that attention um, did not succeed in and uh, sometimes refused to show up. Hmm. Did the so, teachers notice that? You know, what's very interesting is I don't remember... I never met my counselor. I don't remember anyone talking to me about, I remember my family getting upset. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't miss school. I remember I just, you know, the front office called, hey, your, your granddaughter's not at the class. And my grandmother called the school and said, look, if she ever misses school again, you call me. And she let me know that. So I, by the time I was at the end of my sophomore year, I couldn't miss, I couldn't ditch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I had been caught. But by then, Fresh, you know, towards the end of your sophomore year, you know, you, that's the foundation you lay those earlier in high school, and they're critical into determining your outcome. And unfortunately, mine was very shaky and full of really bad grades. And I had to go to summer school to make up for F's. And, um, and it was a struggle. And my family was like, what's wrong? Why aren't you making good choices? And of course, in school, it's like a behavior issue. You know, and, and mm. I now know behavior issues are a symptom of something. And I want everyone to know that behavior issues are a symptom of something. Ooh. A young person. Yeah. So it's, it's not that I'm not a young person. It's what's happening. And, and mm. it's during the, in that time, where are they at in life? Anyway, uh, so I remember towards the end of my junior year, I, w I was asked to come to the office. And I was like, what mm. now? What now? Why am I going now? Yeah. This, time, this time I went into the counselor's office. Hmm. And I had um, sat me down, and I remember, I'll just never forget this. They had a letter in their hand, and they said, hey, they called me Nikki at the time. Nikki was my nickname. And Nikki, look, a teacher on campus has found some leadership, that sees leadership quality in you. Oh. They find that you have some talents and skills that make you um, a suitable candidate for this program called Jobs for Arizona's Graduates. And I was like, someone noticed me? Yeah. Someone saw something positive in me? I still want to cry every time I think about it because I just remember that moment like in shock. And they, she had me the letter and said, take this home, talk it over with your grandparents, you know, your family, your family, you know, can, you know, buy into. And, but really, ultimately, it is your choice if you want to make a commitment to this program to develop those, those, those skills and talents that, uh, that have been identified. And I was like, sign me up. <laughs> sign me up. I'll take it. Uh, you know, I went home and the struggle that my family had gone through and trying to support me through my education, they were excited to see me excited about something. So, of course, we were like, yes, yes, commit. We are all in. So it really was a family effort. I lived with my grandparents at the time, so they were very supportive. Well, so tell me, what was your reaction to your first moment in JAG? Because as a uh, alumna myself the first day of JAG it felt like heaven like a class where I get to learn about this and that and this 
So tell me about your experience. I would, you know, I remember walking in and it wasn't a classroom like any other. My cl my jazz classroom was set in Old Main, um, and which is a part of our, our, our original part of our school. You walk in, it was on the right, and Mrs. Candia, big smile, uh, very welcoming, and the classroom wasn't set up like a normal class. So, you know, it wasn't, you walk in and sit at the chairs and look at the, the front, it was set up differently. There were stations and, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there was, it was it was like a, a every every day was an open communication. There was a refrigerator. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Let's let's make sure we meet those those basic needs before you get to your your learning today, because uh, so there was a lot of like nurturing as well. Mm -hmm. So it very much felt different. It was like you're preparing me to learn while I'm in this space already, and that's that's a pretty unique thing as opposed to a classroom. You walk in, bell rings. Okay, let's get started, class. Yeah. Pretty much you're coming in. Okay. Let's center you. Let's let's all you know. How are you doing? Let's let's mm. talk about what's going on. Does anyone need support? Um, you know, let's let's get to know each other, and then let's get to the meat. You know, let's let's learn some uh, some great things that are gonna help propel you in your future. But what was so mm -hmm. unique from the get go was how Miss uh, Mrs. Kendi, as we called her all those years ago, convinced me to change my mind about my other classes because hmm. you know once you're doing jag and if you struggled in your past classes it's like well then this is all i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm gonna give yeah. my full effort and still forget the rest mm -hmm. no <laughs> you know that is not how how we do we gotta she, she really um with a gentle yet firm you know this is how it's going to happen and we're going to set these plans in place a b and c and you're going to have you have amazing talents and skills we're going to develop those and we're also going to look at your other classes and we're going to get your other teachers involved and we're going to have them help you and i was like what they're not going to help me <laughs> so she i you know behind the scenes jack coordinators do amazing things so i'm sure she went around and talked to each one of them individually. But that's that school year, I was held accountable weekly. Every Friday, I had to bring this piece of paper to Mrs. Canby and all my teachers had to sign it. That mm -hmm. Monday, Friday, Nicole turned, Nikki turned in her homework. She was engaged in class, she, she participated, and when she needed help, she asked for it. So I had these steps that I had to follow. Okay, did I ask for help? No, I didn't. Okay, let me make sure I, I, I do these things and I, for me, it was a checklist for JAG so I can do all the fun things, the field trip, the, the other ah, things. But mm -hmm. for Mrs. Candia, she was setting up those habits, those, you know, those skills of, of saying, hey, I, I don't understand. Spend some time with me and support mm -hmm. me, you know, and really being that advocate in your education and saying, hey, I need you to sign this. Did I complete, check all of these off this week? And how did I perform as a student? Because it's not just sign this and take it to my JAG coordinator. It's, you have to have a conversation with me now as a teacher, and then you get to sign this. Of course. And change my senior year. So I graduate, thankfully. But, you know, oh, part of JAG was great. I uh, uh, was excited to run for president. I was elected by my, my peers. So then I was held at an even higher standard, right? You know, you're elected mm -hmm. officer. And one of the talents that, uh, that not, not only my JAG peers and Mrs. Candia found in me was that um, – the ability to market, to to mm. to to, to um, woo the crowd, to get others to the buy-in, mm. and uh, I really think uh, some of those key indicators of who my personality was helped uh, Miss Candia set me up for my career, um, which has been in marketing and communications my whole life. So I know uh, I remember the conversation at the beginning of the Jag year. When Mrs. Candia said, "So, what are your goals? Your career goals? Where do you want to? What do you want to do after high school?" And this is like the first two weeks in of my senior year. I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Life Chiropractic College oh. in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm going to be a chiropractor. Hmm. And she said, "Great, let's take a look at those math and science degrees oh. because you're going to that's that you're heavy in math and science." I was like, "What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's not look at those grades." <laughs> So, you know, I understand really the guidance to understand uh, through through her guidance and, and mentoring to understand that where did that come, come from? And it came from my family mm -hmm. and uh, 
you know, they went to the chiropractor and I got to go with them every week since I was a little for and over a decade. So what career had, was I most exposed to? A chiropractor. Weekly. Yeah. So there, I'll be here. <laughs> That's not how it works, right? So, I mean, for some people, sure it does, but that didn't fit my, my real talents. I just didn't know what it was. And then JAG, I found my voice in public speaking. Uh, I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. And uh, and, and that's one of my, my it's something I continue to, to do. And um, it was until years later that I understood that, a few years later that I understood without JAG, I would not have graduated high school. Mm. Uh, I graduated barely, mm. and thank God that Jag supported me through that time because I don't know because of my spirit had already been crushed from so many experiences in school that had I not been able to cross that finish line with my peers, I'm not sure I would have been able to return emotionally and mentally. You know, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah. So one of the favorite people like in the world that I love is Oprah Winfrey. And she has mentioned over and over in her interviews that the one thing, the one lesson, collective lesson that she learned over her career was that there are three things people want to know. Do you hear me? Do you see me? Does what I say mean anything to you? And it sounds like your jag direction when you entered jag that's when you finally could feel seen to feel heard and to feel understood so yeah. i love how your jag experience was positive and has led you uh, into becoming the woman that you are today nicole yeah. thank you yeah. thank you yes jag really set me up and and, and mrs candia you know my jag coordinator in showing me that i could value myself as a mm. person yeah. And that my story, my journey does matter, and absolutely. Mm. And when you when you can separate yourself as a young seventeen or eighteen year old and, and, and be able to say I'm um, away from my peers, my 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 best friends, and the, and the things that are calling me, who am I individually, and how am I am I okay with that right now? Yeah, and and yeah. let's work through it if I'm not, you know, reach out to your coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> our coordinators man they can stay they, they see things in us that we don't see at the time mm. and what's amazing um as i've, I've worked for um mrs candia grace now for the last almost seven years in november almost seven years uh, she still has that she mm. still does that for me and still reminds me you're okay yeah. the way you are you're okay because you know mm. we all still question ourselves and we still struggle with imposter syndrome you know am i good enough to be here am i am i strong enough to succeed here yeah yeah and she's yeah yeah you need that person in your life to say yeah you are because i know you are i see it yeah and i love that you brought up imposter syndrome right now i'm a senior at college and my major is psychology. So this term has been the big thing in psychology. So yes. can we talk a little bit more about your experience with imposter syndrome? Absolutely. Um, I've spent my entire career in, in the marketing department. Marketing and public relations, sales, I love it. Uh, connectivity, networking, growing business, uh, just developing it's just the whole communication thing designing i'm a graphic designer web developer i do videography so mm -hmm. i'm a very very creative person i had i knew i one day i wanted to be a chief marketing officer and in my 20s my late 20s i worked for a financial institution credit union west here in arizona one of the most amazing financial institutions ever and I, I had the most amazing CMO, Chief Marketing Officer at the time, Rosie, who brought me onto a team and I got to work with her and a group of women in the marketing department for eight years. And it was the most growth I had experienced in my career and learned so much. And then I learned early, in my early 30s, that there is a, a glass ceiling when you don't have a college degree. So then that backs all the way up to my experience in college. 19 years old, you know, 18 years old, struggled in high school. So I tried college quite a few times, 18, 19, 22, uh, and uh, just, 
at that time still was an undiagnosed uh, with learning disabilities adult. So I had not been diagnosed with my, my learning disabilities yet. Mm -hmm. So when I learned that the chief marketing officer goal was distant because I needed a four-year degree, I, I was crushed because I felt my talents, I felt my skills and my experience really didn't matter again. Mm. You know, who I am doesn't matter, just the piece of paper. I'm more, I work hard. You know, I develop my talents. I have great um, um, uh, work ethic and, and uh, my return ROI on online campaigns. I'm an excellent, you know, project manager. Yeah. You know, you feel You are more than just that paper. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, as, as someone with learning disabilities mm -hmm. uh, and, and who struggled in school and who didn't, um, you know, finish in college, you try harder, you work harder, you get it, get there earlier and stay later because you, 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 you just, you have this drive because you, you know that you didn't succeed in that area. So you really want to outshine as much so in this area, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really think that really helped propel my career, that drive, but there's always been in the back of my heart and in my mind that nagging feeling to get my degree. But I was petrified to, to do that. Uh, I had completed in, in community college some math and, and my science. I kept going to, to community college, you know, and getting different credits here and there, here and there. Never saw a counselor, never had a path. It was very indirect. And so, when I went back to, oh, uh, back up, so at the credit union, I found my glass ceiling, I wouldn't be CMO um, without a degree, you know, and so I remember my CEO at the time, Bob McGregor, I had set up a credit union, I was giving scholarships to um, um, students who volunteered, and I had set up the photo op, you know, the marketing coordinator with our, our president, you're right, with our president and the students and the big, the big check that he's going to hand them. <laughs> So he starts telling his story and he tells the students he went back to college in his 40s, mm. he was in construction before, went back to his college in his, went to college in his 40s, got his accountancy, accountancy degree, became a CFO, so he's a CFO at the credit union and now is a CEO. And my eyes were wide eyed. I'm like, that could be me. I saw an opportunity. That. Yes. I'm like. You can still do it. I still can. It wasn't too late. Mm. So I, within a year, enrolled uh, in, in Western Governors University, which is an online um, university. And that was in 2014. So that was quite a journey. My first uh, three years were, were very successful until I hit those math classes. And that was mm. in 2017. Uh, no, 2018, the beginning of 2018. And uh, I... Uh, failed an entire semester. I had, I had done all of my classes, all my marketing mm -hmm. management, and my, you know, all of my, every class had gotten it out of the way, and I came down to, to uh, advanced algebra, <laughs> probability and statistics, oh. finance, and managerial accounting. I saved them all to the end because I avoided them like the plague. Another, for me, frustrating piece in this is that that connectivity and I know I should have done more work with the counselor that was provided to me to the, to the university but I brought over what I had done in high school and I didn't connect my counselor who probably could have helped me spread those out a little bit better but yeah. instead just did it on my own and left myself in the, in the lurch so for two semesters in a row I tried those classes and failed mm -hmm. I found myself in my doctor's office uh, at the beginning of 2019 January 2019 because 2018 was a bust in school and I went there and I was crying. I said, mm. these four classes, math, is it math really going to keep me from my bachelor's degree? Mm. Is this really going to be the end of the line, the story of I almost made it, but I can't for some reason. And I don't understand. And he had been working with me prior for about six months. And he was the one who uncovered, um, because that, that whole year was such a struggle in those four classes, uncovered ADHD. I had a lot of different symptoms. Um, you know, but I still, there were so many things going on. Plus I have those, uh, it wasn't until later I was diagnosed with my dyslexia. It wasn't until 2019, dyslexia and dyscalculia. Um, Can you share real quick what that means? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I, I, 
I'll back it up. Sorry. I get a little bit <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> So when I came to him in January 2019, I said, is, is this ADHD what's preventing me from passing these four classes? Yeah. And he said, no, hmm. that is not it. You've already established the, the, kind of the, the strategies in place to manage, manage that. And uh, you're very lower on that spectrum there. So, you know, I, I, that is not what's holding you back. Let's look at this other area. So he had me take um, some, uh, dis some learning disability tests, um, including dyslexia and dyscalculia. Dyslexia is a reading disability. That's where you um, s switch letters. And what I do entirely is remove words. So if you're reading a problem like, uh, and the word not, this will not happen, and I remove this will happen. You know, when you're reading a math problem, you remove one key word when you're reading it. And that's it. it. That's it. You're never going to get past that. So, um, and I switch. I learned that I switch nines and, and sixes, my sevens and my fours. And um, given a number, by the third number, I've already forgotten the first one. I can't keep up when it comes to numbers. So that, that committing it to memory is, is mm. my short-term memory is, is, is um uh, shortened because of the ADHD symptoms. So, yeah. so uh, all of that came to head. So when he uncovered that and said, no, ADHD won't hold you back. There are plenty of people who can move forward when they get the support they need and you're doing the work. And I'm like, okay, but then why is this not working? Uncovered dyslexia, dyscalculia, and mm. probably saying the word wrong, but <laughs> game changer, game changer. So that was the end of 2019. So in January of 2020, yeah. the, the, the year the pandemic began, I started researching in very intensely as well as working with my psychiatrist and my counselor in regards to these two very specific disabilities. Because I said, I'm not going to let this be the end of my college dream because I'm a five-time dropout from, from college. And I've always wanted that degree since I, was, mm. since I graduated high school. I felt I deserved it too. Mm. Um, so I really got, got to work and uh, learned how to slow down, uh, how to learn math, and how I was able through some education with working with Western Governors University with my accommodations, in addition to support and how to learn math, something I'd never done before. I went through like four workshops that they put me through um, when I came back to take these four classes back on my last semester, and I really wished I hadn't taken those four workshops at the beginning of my college career. I might have finished on time. <laughs> Maybe not. The story had to be, my journey had to be the way it was, because it's, it's yeah. very unique. Um, so once those strategies were in place, I uh, enrolled back into WGU last year, at the end of the year, and completed those four classes, algebra, probability and statistics, finance, and managerial accounting, back to back to back to back. Wow. And I was, I, I was telling everybody on my team at JAG every, every day, I love math. Every day I'm learning how to do math, yeah. and I'm absolutely in love with it now. Hmm. Something I've hated for over 40 years. That is beautiful. That yeah. is beautiful. So I, I'm happy to report I completed uh, my final, uh, my capstone. I completed that in March. And I am graduating this Saturday from Western Governors University with my degree. Oh, go. look at that. That I'm, is so exciting. Uh, this, uh, this was such hard work. But mm. it was worth hey, it. you can just wear that for the rest of the podcast. That, that's it. something to it. be proud. I'm uh, very, very happy. Yeah. Very, very happy. And of course, this, this, this is special. This came in the mail. This came in the mail the other day, and it's my degree. Look at that. Oh, look at that. This is a 20-year oh. journey. This is a 20-year journey. 20-year journey. Mm. journey. I knew I wanted it, and very excited to report. You know, I was uh, I've been the communications manager with. with oh, I used to wear this the rest of the time. There you go. <laughs> Put it back on. Um, communications manager of the past couple of years with JAG. Uh, started as a JAG coordinator and completed my degree. And I've um, um, had some pretty good successes within uh, 
is an Arizona Jag and was recently promoted to Director of Marketing. And oh, congratulations. That's my <laughs> Oh, Nicole, um, you mentioned something playfully, but I want to get back to that. You were saying that you, after learning everything that you learned about um, knowing how you learn, that you were able to wish that maybe you could have passed and graduated in the regular time when yes. you first went to college. Yes. But then you mentioned that maybe if I had done that, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Is sure. that how you truly feel? Or was that, let's get back you to know, that comment. Sure, sure. Um, I truly do wish. Mm. I could have completed college alongside my peers mm. 20 plus years ago. The There is truth when you are in high school and you're told those with a degree will make a, mil more, a million dollars more than you in a lifetime of a career. And that's a fact. So I'm upset about that because <laughs> I'm starting now. <laughs> And that's okay you know, to be upset about that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, you have, when you're watching your mental health as you're navigating through the why, why, and, and how, and, and I want to accomplish this, mm -hmm. you have to experience those emotions the anger, the, the frustration, the letdown as you go through that journey. And you have to not try to eliminate those feelings. Let them be there because they are part of what shaped you and who you are. So sure, it hurts, but you have to remember, breathe. Mm -hmm. Because those of us who have educational trauma and any other trauma starting at a young age, we have a tendency to increase our cortisol levels all on our own. Yeah. Just through thinking, right? We start to hold our breath and feel that blood pressure rising. And it's yeah. like, you know, and you... Relax. Yeah, I call those ends automatic negative thoughts and yes, start yes. to just yeah go over yeah. your head. Yeah, and so when I reach those points where I'm like, it's kind of you know this this like I'm graduating now, yay! But you also mourn. I also am mourning that that I, I missed mm. um, this at 22. Um, I also accept that that's, it's, it's okay. It is part of my journey and there's still more to be written. So, mm. and I'm excited to, to, to do that. I, I, I think one of the biggest thing now, because of my journey and, and especially in the last two years and becoming, um, learning that I'm an adult learner with disabilities, mm. something I had never known that I had been a learner my whole educational career, carrying disabilities that were putting up barriers and I was unaware of. Now I have this new passion to reach every adult who has ever dreamt of getting a degree, but has felt that they just couldn't to seek out why look within those disability areas. Wow. That's powerful. Nicole, if, if you right now could write a book, what about your life? Um, all the things you've overcome, the struggles, the success, what would you name that book? <laughs> okay, so I, I'm grappling, it's so funny, I'm grappling with two two titles, actually. Oh, tell me I've, both. I've been uh, working on my novel since my early 20s, but I always said I'm not going to finish my novel till I finish school. And I, I've always held these critical, critical, tight things about myself, which kind of Held me back, but I'm gonna, I'm ready to let it loose, you know, then to not say if this, then that. So I'm gonna get to my book now. Um, so my first one was Granny Got a Degree because I am a grandma. <laughs> because I, in specific, I want to reach um, women, uh, adult women who, who left college to raise their children, left because they were a single parent, left because they didn't know they had learning disabilities, you know. I want to reach them, but you know, even if you're a grandma, you can still do this. You can still get yes, this done. Still walk, walk. Can. <laughs> and then the other one, when when I think about writing fully um, to to the masses, especially young people, mm. how to really focus uh, in their career 
um, and, and, and really in that professional development post-graduation from high school and when they're thinking about their next steps um, and really uh, giving them the tips um, and strategies mm -hmm. to identify things early so they can be successful, to connect early so they can be successful, to speak early so they can be successful. Um, that one I want to call <laughs> bacon flavor liquid. Whoa, bacon I'm gonna tell flavor you liquid. <laughs> yes, so I'm a marketer, you know, uh, uh, unique names. And when I'm trying to reach a demographic that's younger than mine, uh, but that actually came from, I recently went to my doctor and she's like, I'm you're, you're low in vitamin D and it's something normal out here in Arizona because we hide from the sun. Uh, so she uh, sent a, said, I'm sending in a prescription strength for you. So I was waiting for it just to, to for it to be filled. So the other day, and this is what, the other week, I look um, in my uh, pharmacy app to mm -hmm. see where my refills are and it or, or where my prescription are, and it says I have a prescription that's pending approval, and it's called bacon flavored liquid. <laughs> hmm. I thought that was the most genius thing ever. Um, that obviously wasn't medicine for me. I think it was a mistake. But I took a screenshot and I'm like, that's the cover of my book. Mm. That's in a nutshell. I was expecting vitamin D, but I got bacon flavored liquid instead. And that's life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. You need to write that book. And I hope you can come back on the podcast. Just I will. To talk about well, this will be a short book. one. Yeah. One of my short yeah. books. Yeah. <laughs> You mentioned that, and I know we're now going way back, um, right after, I believe you said high school, you were part of a program with Duke. Can you mention that a little bit? Sure. So after I graduated um, high school, from Tallis Union High School, it uh, was a few years later. I lived in the community um, and uh, worked part-time for the library, the Tallis City Library. and. Uh, part time. So I wanted to establish a support group, resource mm -hmm. and support group for young teen moms. Mm -hmm. So young girls who were in high school who were pregnant and or already a mom. And whether they were in high school or had recently dropped out. And the city that my, my uh, everyone on, was on board, the city staff was on board, the, the library was on board, like absolutely utilize this space and you can do that. My first group that I led I had actually turned 21, 22 right before that group started. Um, uh, it was about six young girls in, the, in my community that I uh, got to work with and develop and really support them in thinking differently about school and really telling them my story in, in graduating because I wanted to see them get their high school diploma. I, forgot, I did fail to mention I was a young mom. I had my daughter one month after I turned 19. Mm -hmm. So I really have a huge heart for teen moms Mm -hmm. I know um, from my personal experience, the things and, and that you go through that lead up to that anyway, mm -hmm. and it's it's a struggle, and we're you know we're already struggling so much in school, and then we got there, and it's even more of a okay or something else, you know, yeah. I didn't get right, you know. <laughs> so I wanted them to know, you know, this didn't doesn't mean that you can't get your high school diploma, you can succeed in and like with, with my daughter and she's having a great time, life is good. So yeah, uh, that I was really, that. Um, I connected with them, they, that was really amazing. And within a few years, about a year and a half after that, my husband and I together launched our second program in that community to work with um, youth in high school. And uh, we did a community play. So the city um, youth program asked us to lead a, uh, asked me and taught my husband to lead the next group um, and do a, a community play. So we got to mentor and work with a group of uh, teen council youth for six months. And mm. that was really fun. And then I've just been working with the youth in my community in Tolleson ever since in developing programs. So fast forward, when I worked at Credit Union West in the marketing department, I knew I was going to be the CMO there one day. I'm never leaving the credit yes. union. I had lunch with, uh, with Grace because at that point I had gone, started my college career. And uh, with uh, Mrs. Candia from JAG and the director, um, Diana, we had lunch and they said, hey, we have a grant opportunity to launch a community-based JAG program in Tullison and we want you. And I was like, I've been already been working with youth this whole 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm in. I, uh, 
I uh, put my my corporate hat down and came into nonprofit and finished my degree here with with JAG. My journey here and the staff has been so amazing. It's just like being in school in JAG again, getting all the supportive resources. Even our director of operations, Diana, took months to tutor me for managerial accounting. You know, outside of work hours, she's taking time to tutor me, and the rest of the team is just cheering me on and. Um, that support was still there. So my JAG journey continued on through college. Oh, I love that. I know that you have so many things going for you. You're about to graduate, this job, all the things that you've overcome. But on the not so good days, what makes you feel hopeful? What makes you want to keep going? Because even though you know you can overcome, when you're in that moment, you literally cannot see yes. just yes. the next 10 minutes yes. in front of you. Absolutely. So here at JAG, uh, one of our recents, and, and, and I've always struggled in that area. I'm really good at raising my own cortisol levels and that, letting that anxiety and me feeling overwhelmed and just feeling, oh. Yeah. Recently in one of our staff meetings at the beginning of the school year, uh, one of our partners came and spoke and gave us some tips. And she actually used to work for Jack when he was at Toya. And she gave us tips on how to um, nav- how to help to, to when we get overwhelmed and, and it's like, I can't even move the next step with this project. I'm panicking. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she said a, a bottle of bubbles, you know, Go outside, step away, and blow bubbles. And I was like, that's interesting. So I'm, you know, with ADHD, you tell someone with ADHD to zen out, relax. Oh, please. What does that doesn't work, right? No, no. You want me to deep breathe how many times? The second time in, I'm already bored with this. So I'm going to move on. But blowing bubbles is very active. Huh. especially um, for those who need to be fidgeting, who need to move around. So she said actively move away from the stressor of the moment. Go blow some bubbles for a minute, two minutes, however long you need. And what I learned is when you blow bubbles, you have to... You're breathing. So when I'm stressed out and I, don't, and I can't step away, like maybe in a meeting, I'm starting to get anxious because I'm about to be the presenter and we all get anxious. It's like, <laughs> okay, it's about to be my time. I imagine blowing those bubbles and I can see them. And, oh, that has been huge help. And that's my new um, strategy to calm me down. Anyone who, um, not anyone, but many who have suffer from ADHD and the symptoms from that do know that strategies can work for, for a while and then they don't work. So remember to be gentle with yourself. And when the strategy stops working, get a new one. Don't give up. Don't stop bringing those cortisol levels back down because it's very important for our health. Mm. I want to live a long time. (laughs) So you got to bring, you know, strengthening our heart and our lungs for longevity is is making sure those, those cortisol levels are in check. And for those who have trauma early on, that flap that controls it is broken. It's a little loose. Yeah. We kind of got to be proactive in ourselves and saying, all right, I'm back down. I can I can navigate this, and I can say, "Hey, overwhelmed, someone want? Can I get some support?" And mm. have an amazing team. They're like, "Yes." I love that, Nicole. I have one more question for you. You, to in my eyes, are this person who is extremely successful. But I want to know what is your definition of success. Do you feel like you've made it, whatever made it is? Right. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, for me, I set a goal of, I think for me, success is when I can see in my community this wave of excitement about furthering their education, whether they're 18 or 99. Mm. Um, I come from my community where there's only 6% of adults have a bachelor degree. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know what my, you know, I, uh, with this success, you know, my book, I've talked about for 20 plus years, um, seeing 
more more adults in my shoes putting on this cap saying, you know what, I'm going to change the rest of my life starting right now. And be, being able to have access to the resources. So I think, um, and, and of course, you know, that's not, again, a personal success. That's a whole community success. I know, focus on myself, right? It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> so funny. We're, those of us in JAG, we're always thinking about the, the greater community. But no, I, I am successful. When I really can sit back and really, really look at it, just like my JAG coordinator and boss, uh, Grace Candia would tell me right now, Nicole, you're doing amazing. Oh. Just like my, my psychiatrist told me four years ago, he said, when I kept asking him, I need those steps so I can be better. He said, who set that criteria? Whose better are you following? Yeah. And when I have analyzed that, I'm like, oh, you know, I did that to myself. My past experiences says you're not allowed to fail anymore, Nicole, but now I know failure is part of learning. So mm. I, I think uh, I think I'll probably feel like I've reached success this Saturday when I'm walking across that stage getting my degree. Yeah. Um, and uh, I definitely feel successful in getting to this point. Mm. But I'm not done. I, I think... Um, I want to. I want to see more in my shoes, and then you know, I'll feel success. <laughs> this is only the beginning, Nicole. Well, I've Nicole. I've truly enjoyed listening to your journey, your story, and how you were this little girl in middle school, wanting to feel seen, wanting to feel heard and understood, but you just never got that. And yet, you were there was this hunger. It felt like inside of you to want to learn and just things aligned for you and you ended up in JAG and you finally could feel seen, heard, understood, and you were starting to get the things, your qualities that you were good at and you finally understood, whoa, I matter without all these other materialistic or objects outside of who you were. And your journey with college that has taken 20 years. Oh, yes. With yes. all of that, Nicole. Wow. That has been incredible to listen Thank to. You. And this is only the beginning. And I hope Thank that, I don't know if this is a new chapter that you're about to enter, but I feel like it's a whole new book. And I so I'm you. excited to see what that book is going to hold. So thank you for coming today on this podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll just toss up the... There we go. Woo! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest themes, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at JAG Students. Thanks again and see you next time.